Hi and welcome back, it's Vicky here and today I'm going to create 10 cards showcasing the latest card kit by Spellbinders. Now just like always this is packed with wonderful products, this is one of the best kits in the market because it is a great value for money. And just like always let's take a quick look on what's included and then I'm going to share 10 cards and hopefully I will inspire you. In every kit there is always a leaflet that gives you three card ideas as well as a list of whatever it is included and at the back you will find a guide on how you can put together the dies from the kit. Just like always you will get your basic supplies such as foam squares and a double sided tape and of course your 10 envelopes and 10 pre-folded cards. So these are great since I am creating 10 cards today this is exactly what I'm going to use. And these are the standard size, that's 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. Now let's take a look at the ties this month. These are 10 ties included and uh, they are going to help you create a lovely lamppost. I'm going to make one card today using these dies so you can see them in action. Now there are there is a base uh, lamp as well as lots and lots of embellishments. So, so for example you will get the Noel uh, sentiment to die cut as well as a bow, a wreath as well as tiny little flowers for uh, decorating your wreath. In the kit you will get a pack of journaling cards. These have lovely designs and they are uh, front and back. You will get, if I count it correctly, there are 20 different designs here, but um, although they are front and back, you will get two of each design so you don't have to fight on which side you are going to use. Now of course you can use them for your journaling on um, other projects as well but in my case I like to use those as panels on top of my card and you will see me using some of these on my cards today. And of course just like with every kit, pattern papers, stamps, journaling cards, stickers, everything matches together so same color combo, same designs. Let's move on to the stamp set. You will get three sentiments for the holidays in a lovely script font, a row of trees and a standalone tree as well as stars and snowflakes. Now let's take a look at the stickers. These are chipboard stickers in lovely big uh, sizes so they would make a good focal point. You will get tags in here, little bows, a little house, frames as well as flowers and many sentiments. Now you can see that uh, you can uh, separate them they are sticky and quite thick, so they do give dimension on your cards. Some sparkle on your holiday cards is a must, so you will get a pack of golden sequins in different sizes. And here is another pack of stickers in uh, gold and black. These are puffy stickers and you will find here many sentiments and other embellishments for your cards. Now let's take a look at the 6x6 paper pad. Just like always, you will find 20 different designs here, these are not double-sided, some of the pages are specialty paper so you will see that they have some lovely foiling on top and in total there are 40 pages in this paper pad so you get 2 pages for each design. I will be using lots and lots of these pattern papers on my 10 cards today. And let's take a look at the cardstock included, you will find 9 pages in 9 different colors one of them is a foiled golden one. And when I do the unboxing every month, my favorite is to take a look at the pack of die cuts. So I always leave it at the end and I like to spread them around all over my glass mat so that I can see exactly what I have to play with. These are my favorite. I love creating cards using those because you can put together cards in no time. After all, everything matches together and you can uh, combine this with the pattern paper included in the kit and you can come up with lovely designs. The fun part about these die cuts is that there are hundreds of them included, plus you will get two of each die cut, so you don't have to hoard one if you absolutely love it. And here they are all together. If you notice, I like to arrange them in uh, groups, so you will find all the sentiments in one side, all the foliage in another, the ornaments together, and that makes it easy for me to decide what I want to use where. And let's start with the first card. I do have my card base here as well as four of the die cuts. I'm using one of the pattern papers included which is the one with the hood on top and I did cut it out to be slightly smaller than my standard card so I end up having a lovely border which is a detail that I absolutely love with my cards. 
Now I'm going to create a little cluster card and I always like to use tags on my cluster cards. So here I'm using the one with the red and white stripes and I'm going to combine it with those poinsettia flowers. On these cluster cards I like to play with dimension so some elements go completely flat with uh, glue at the back and others are going to be popped on top with some uh, foam squares at the back. So I went with a green sentiment that says Seasons Greetings and it is one of the die cuts that has a lovely falling on top as well as the word Joy on top of it. I'm going to finish off my card by threading a little bit of uh, twine through that hole on the tag. And I should have done that uh, beforehand, but that was an afterthought. And finally, I'm going to stick some of the golden sequins at the center of the flowers as well as embellish it all around. So I added some dots of glue in different areas and now with my embellishment wand, I'm picking up the tiniest ones to stick around the flower composition. And then I'm going to stick a couple of the bigger sequins at the center of my poinsettias. So this is the finished card and you can see some close-up photos. For my next card I'm going to combine two of the journaling cards from the kit. Now one of them has a lovely design on top, that lovely little scene, but I don't want to use it as it is, I want to somehow um, embellish it and make it more interesting so I am going to add dimension for that I did cut out a snow bank you can use a die if you have one or you can just use your scissors over white cardstock so now I already have some dimension on my card with a snow bank since it is popped on top and now the house looks as if it is far away in my scene now I'm going to stick one of the die cut trees on top of that Again, I'm going to pop it with foam tape at the back and now the house looks even more far behind. And I'm going to embellish this panel even more to make it look more interesting and not as plain as it was. So I grabbed the sign that says uh, North Pole and the wording is actually foiled on top and I absolutely love these kind of details. Again, I'm using foam squares and I'm going to stick that on top of the tree so this way I have lots and lots of dimension three different layers there and on top of the uh, sign I'm going to pop the bird now my scene is definitely more dimensional and more interesting than the simple journaling card and since I have uh, lots of red on one side I want to somehow balance it with some red on the other side that's why I'm going to add that other journaling card at the background so you can see a pop of color underneath. Now I'm going to stick that panel on top of one of the pre-folded cards and I'm going landscape this time. You can call this card done or if you want you can add even more details, for example snow, falling snow on top of your scene. I decided to add a little star at the top of my decorated tree. So I'm going to bring in the stars from the die set and I'm going to die cut them using the foiled cardstock from the kit and I'm going to stick one of them on top. Now there are ornaments so I'm going to go with the obvious where I'm going to hang the ornaments on one of my cards and I'm going to combine it with a couple of uh, die cuts. One of them is um, the word Noel that I have die cut using one of the dies. Now I'm going to use some uh, golden thread which I am going to secure at the back of the ornaments by using a tiny little piece of double sided tape and I'm going to play again with dimension. For uh, two of the ornaments I'm going to go with uh, foam squares at the back. For one of them I'm going to stick it directly on top of my panel. All three of the ornaments already have some foiled golden uh, bow at the top. So I think the golden thread is a lovely touch and it matches perfectly with the rest of the design. I used my paper trimmer to cut out a little white panel where I'm working on top and uh, I do have a four and a quarter by five and a half pattern paper panel, this lovely one with the colorful stripes which is going to cover up completely my card front and I love how it matches the color of the ornament so everything comes together and the, the truth is that you can go with any of the pattern papers from the paper pad since uh, 
it is actually from the same collection and uh, anything you add at the back is going to match perfectly. On one of the corners I'm adding the sentiments. The green one says, tis the season to be jolly and on top I'm sticking the word Noel that I have die cut. Now all I have to do is to stick this panel on top of one of the white cards and I have a card ready to go. You will find lots of uh, gifts in the die cuts and uh, I'm going to combine those, stack them one on top of the other and the idea here is to create kind of a Christmas tree made out of the gifts. So I have a pattern paper here that um, I cut out to be four and a quarter by five and a half and uh, I picked the one with the golden stripes, these are foiled there. And on top I'm just going to stick a white panel. This way I have a white area so that I can help my elements pop even better. Now I'm going to stack one on top of the other, try to create kind of a three tier tree, Christmas tree. And um, I am going to stick them down, I do have some foam tape at the back. Now if you notice they are not the same size, so at the bottom I will not end up having a straight line. So here is the red one and once I stick down the green one you will see what I mean at the bottom of the green one. But this is not a problem, I'm going to cover it up with a sentiment and no one will ever know. Now to finish it off I'm also going to use a little star at the top. So now I think it looks like a Christmas tree made out of presents. Now I absolutely love creating snow scenes and once I saw the trees and the deer I knew I had to make one of those cards. So I did cut out a couple of snow banks and for that I used uh, my dies. If you don't have such dies you can just use your scissors to create a couple of slopes out of white cardstock. And I'm going to use archival ink to ink up a blue panel that I have already cut out. Now I want to have kind of an ombre look where I will have one edge really dark fading out to the lighter side. And I want to add splashes, white splashes to create my snow. And this is the reason why I decided to go with archival ink which dries permanent and it doesn't react with any splashes that you add on top. If I had gone with uh, distress oxide ink for example, that would react with the splatters on top and they wouldn't uh, look super bright. So all I'm doing here is using Versamark ink and I'm stamping one of the sentiments on my sky. I'm going to move along and add my white embossing powder and I'm using bright opaque embossing powder here, this is by WOW. I'm going to heat set the powder with my heat gun. And of course there are so many different ways to add snow. You can add splashes like I'm going to do because I love the random look. It looks really organic. But of course you can use a stencil, you can use your gel pen and add little dots here and there, which is something that I will do in uh, one of the next cards. You can uh, die cut snowflakes and stick them on top or even stick a little sequence or white gems to get that uh, snowy look. Now that my background and the sentiment are ready, it's time to put everything together. So I'm going to stick the snow banks at the bottom. I usually like to have a couple of them. One goes directly flat with glue, the other on top with a foam tape. And then I'm going to stick the trees and the little deer on top. Now if you want to make this even more fun, you can add a little red gem at the nose of your deer, which is going to turn him into Rudolph. Well, he won't have antlers, but who cares, it's just a card. Now I'm going to make uh, my panel nice and neat by using my scissors and I'm going to stick that on top of my pre-folded card. And here are some close-up photos. Now for my next card, I'm going to go with another one of those cluster cards, again starting with one of the tags. And uh, this time I'm going to thread some twine. 
There are many ways to thread twine and in every one of those I'm doing a different uh, uh, design. So here I just thread it through. I'm not going to tie a knot with the white one. However, I did bring that golden thread and I'm going to tie a knot over the white one with that, which is going to keep it in place and it's going to add an extra touch. So this is going to lay flat on top of my pattern paper. And I did pick bits and pieces from the die cuts to create my cluster. Now, if you notice on all the clusters that I created today for my cards, I always start with a tuck and then I have a big focal point. So in this case, my big focal point is the big poinsettia, which I'm going to embellish all around by using a couple of sentiments and lots and lots of foliage. Cluster cards are not as easy to put together, although it looks as if I'm uh, putting them together in like a minute or so. But trust me, I did play along before filming this card, just to make sure that I like how the elements are going to go together and that uh, the finished uh, cluster is going to look um, pleasing to the eye. In these kind of cards, I always play with dimension, elements that are laying flat and others on top, with foam tape, so I do get um, some depth. I also like to add some texture and shine. You will see that I have thread or um, I even have some sequence on top. And I also try to balance the shapes and the colors of the designs. So here I did add a couple of stars here and there to add some extra shine. I'm going to stick the panel on top of my pre-folded card and I'm going to finish it off by adding a large golden sequin at the center of my poinsettia. And here are some close-up photos. Moving on to the next card and this time I'm going to play with the dies that were included in the kit. So here I have die cut the lamp post out of black cardstock and I'm going to add the light with gold cardstock. And there are many bits and pieces that you can die cut to embellish it. I decided to go with white for embellishing because once you put everything together it's going to look as if it has white snow in different areas of the lamp post. I have also die cut the wreath two times, once out of a light green cardstock and another one from darker shade of green. This way it's going to end up looking uh, more fluffy once I stick one on top of the other. And uh, there are different uh, elements that you can embellish your wreath. There is a bow that I'm going to put together and stick it on top. I cut it out from uh, gold cardstock as well. And I did cut out tiny little flowers out of uh, dark red. You can stick them around the wreath if you like. I decided to nest all three of them together. There is also a tiny die that cuts out a snow bank and the, it already has a slit so you can uh, place your post inside. And then I did cut out a snow bank with one of the dies that I had in my stash so that I can stick the whole thing on top. I do have tiny little pieces of foam tape at the back of my lamp post, so this is dimensional. And I did cut out the word Noel, again using the die, out of the gold cardstock. Now, I did use dark navy blue for my background, and uh, I'm going to finish it off by adding some snow. Of course, you can go by splatters, just like I did in the previous card. But for this, I'm dis I decided to go with my gel pen. I'm just going to add some dots here and there. They are going to be larger or smaller. And finally, I'm going to stick this panel on top of my card base. The fun part about this design is that you can recreate it as many times as you like, since I didn't use any of the pre-made cutouts, but I did cut out everything using the dies, so you can make as many as you like of those. And now for the next card, again, I'm going with one of those cluster designs, again starting with the tag. This time I'm going to uh, tie a bow on uh, one side. So all three of the cluster cards today do have a different way of tying a bow or adding thread on one side. And this time the focal point of this cluster or the main element is going to be that mailbox. So I'm going to nest everything behind that garland that I have uh, stuck at the bottom. And again, I'm playing with elements that are uh, dimensional or completely flat. I did uh, pull a couple of uh, letters to Santa, which I'm going to tuck behind 
So although it is actually a cluster, it does have a theme. So this is all about letters to Santa. I'm going to stick the whole thing on top of my white card base. And you can stick it portrait or landscape. I decided to go landscape this time. And I'm going to finish it off by adding a sentiment. This is one of the chipboard stickers. I will add a couple of golden stars. These are from the puffy stickers. And I'm also going to add a tiny little sequin at the center of the poinsettia. For the next design I'm going to create something completely different. I will keep everything black and white with accents of gold. This is a very elegant looking card. I used a piece of this pattern paper with the black snowflakes and I did add a snowback at the bottom as well as the row of houses from the die cuts. These have lovely golden windows. I am going to make everything nice and neat and I did cut out from the gold cardstock a little flame which I'm going to stick on top and if you notice it does have foam squares so it does create a lovely element which is dimensional. If you want you can easily turn this into a shaker element so you can add acetate behind that uh, window and have some sequins uh, moving inside. I didn't go for a shaker element but it definitely is a thing that you can do to step up this design. I did cut out the word Noel again from the same uh, golden cardstock and I'm going to stick everything on top of the pattern paper that has a black background with lots and lots of uh, Merry Christmas all over the place. In some of the snowflakes I'm going to add a dot of glue and I will stick on top the tiniest of the um, sequins that were included in the pack. I will stick the panel on top of my pre-folded card and I have a really elegant looking card, black and white with golden accents. A completely different look and feel from the rest of the cards that I share today. And finally we have arrived to the last card for today, again a cluster one, again starting with a little tag just like always. I did tie a double bow with the golden thread and this time the main focal point of this cluster is going to be the snow globe with a lovely uh, Christmas tree inside. I did use one of my banner dies that I had in my stash to cut out a little banner out of the gold cardstock just to add a golden accent at the base. On top I did stick my sentiment that says magical and then I'm going to embellish all around the snow globe with foliage. And I'm already on my 10th card but I still have lots and lots of these die cuts to create even more cards or even duplicates of them. I have lots of cardstock as well as pattern paper that I haven't used, stickers, pretty much the kit is still full. Now back to the card I did use the star dies to cut out a th three golden stars which I'm going to stick there and um, they are going to finish off the design. For this uh, design I decided to go with a black panel as a mat. So I'm going to stick the red one on top so I will end up having a black border. Which I think it frames the design really beautifully. So here are some close-up photos on the last card for today. And here are all the 10 cards that I made for today showcasing the November card kit by Spellbinders. Don't forget, down below you will find links to everything I used for creating those cards. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below and let me know which one of those cards was your favorite, if you have any. Thank you all so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you all next time.